This is Dave Bell, Taboo Customs. This is part three of our video covering our snowplow Jeep that we purchased here, which was a 80 CJ5 with a, a Meyer snowplow on it, an old Meyer snowplow. Oh, now we've gone through and uh, obviously we're out of winter now, but we did get our plow going before winter ended. We did get one chance to use it. We really didn't get too many snows this year, so we had uh, we had one chance to use it. We were pretty pretty happy with it, but we did ran it, run into several issues with the plow. Now the first thing was we had a lot of issues with our pump, and uh, when we tried to use the pump, we had a lot of oil just pouring out of here, and it really wouldn't pick up the plow. And what we found was a common Meyer snowplow pump issue is down in here, whenever these plows get water in them, excuse me, whenever these pumps get water in them because of faulty seals, and you can kind of see on the seal maybe there that the seal was not in good shape. Now whenever they get water in them, they will actually crack this port down here and you can't see any cracks there but if you look and you probably can't see it but real close there's actually a crack right down in here that uh, that's what was causing all the oil to pour out of this now someone knew that this was happening because whenever we took this plate off of this base there was actually a ton of rtv just all over inside here as they tried to seal it up but this is a high pressure port, so there was no sealing up that pressure port. We had to replace this whole base. So we did, we replaced the whole base. We rebuilt the whole pump and uh, threw some paint on it. When we did that, we actually learned that whoever had taken that pump apart had not put it back together correctly. They had not replaced the baffle that goes down inside the, uh, the cylinder here. And they actually hadn't even put the check valve back in that goes between the pump and the cylinder here. So we had to buy a new check valve to go in there and get that going. Once we did and we adjusted our, uh, we adjusted our pressure back here, that pump worked great and it picked the plow up and uh, we had no issues with that. So if you do have a plow and you do have a major leak, make sure you check out this pump base down here because there's a good chance that that has cracked. Now another issue we had that we uh, we also fixed on these, and I haven't put the side to side on here yet, the, the, the controller for the side to side, but we are planning on, on doing that here probably in the fall. Now one issue you're going to run into is on these magnetic solenoids here that actuate the valves for both the, uh, uh, the pump itself down here and the side to side motion here. Um, one issue we had was one of these wires had actually broken off. And if it had breaks off, it's really a pain in the butt to try to fix. What we did was had we had to dig out that old that old grommet that was in there until we got down to the wire and we re-soldered this wire to that. But you have to be really careful because it's be really easy to break that wire on the inside. And then we put a new grommet around it sealed it up and then we actually just used some JB well to make sure that we had a strong connection there because what what broke it was the wire being moved back and forth so much in that one area it finally just broken that wire off so we actually did that on all all three of our solenoids here just to avoid that in the future as well so in addition to that you know and that's one of the reasons you know going back to the pump here one of the reasons why they say to change out this fluid you know every winter because over the summer there's a good chance you might get some water down inside that seal and any water in that seal that that freezes down here is going to crack that pump as well as you can see you know how much how much dirt and uh, whatnot we actually had down inside the the hydraulic base and there you can see some of the rtv from where uh, the people went in there and really really rtv'd the crap out of the whole thing so the other thing on these Meyer snow plows that we learned is whenever you do to go to put the mounting bracket on the frame for the snow plow or you go to take it off of the frame of the snow plow, remember that you can pull this front bar off. Now when we got this, uh, this bracket, it was all still together and we were looking at it trying to figure how to put it on and we did some research on the internet. We noticed a lot of pictures where this bracket is still bolted together. And then looking at it, we noticed that we actually have some new shackles here. And uh, I think what had actually happened, because this didn't look like it had been taken apart. 
someone had actually undone these shackles to be able to pull this bracket out. Well, once you unbolt this cross piece right here, these brackets are two pieces and you can bolt them to the frame individually without having to take your shackles out. So, you know, try to remember to do that because I'm pretty certain that whoever took this off of this Jeep several years ago probably just pulled the shackles off and raised it up and took it out that way because that's the only way you'd be able to get this out of here without doing that. So that pretty much does it for our part three update. I uh, just wanted to give an update as far as the snow plow went. As far as the Jeep goes, uh, it's run, been running great. Throughout the, uh, throughout the winter, we started it up, drove it around. Like I said, we plowed snow with it once, starts, starts right up. So it's, it's still been a really good, uh, good purchase for us. Um, over the year here, we'll probably get into it a later on once we kind of catch up on some projects. And we'll probably try to try to get a few more videos going as far as our, our restoration of the Jeep goes. So thank you for watching. And uh, as always, if this has been helpful, uh, please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.